My name is Lisa Davies, and today's presentation is about the image of the child. By the end of the video, we will have examined the concept of image of the child, the Nova Scotia image of the child. You will have the opportunity to define your own image of the child and link it with the implementation of the early development instrument. The concept of image of the child was first introduced by Loris Malaguzzi, founder of the Reggio Emilia schools in Italy. Malaguzzi says, there are hundreds of different images of the child. Each one of you has inside yourself an image of the child that directs you as you begin to relate to a child. This theory within you pushes you to behave in certain ways. It orients you as you talk to the child, listen to the child, observe the child. It is very difficult for you to act contrary to this internal image. For example, if your image is that boys and girls are very different from one another, you will behave differently in your interactions with each of them. So, what is image of the child? It's a cultural, social, and political convention that makes it possible to recognize certain qualities and potentials in children. It also makes it possible to construe expectations and contexts that give value to such qualities and potentials, or to negate them. An educator's image of the child influences their interactions with children and families and underpins the decisions they make about the learning environment. If an educator believes that children are independent and can make choices, the learning environment will provide children with opportunities to explore and make their own decisions. Alternatively, if an educator believes that children are not capable of making decisions, then they will often choose activities for the children and plan activities and schedules that are based on a timetable that's more suited to adults than to the needs and preferences of children. What we believe about children becomes a determining factor in defining their social and ethical identity and the educational and life context offered to them. The Nova Scotia Early Learning Curriculum Framework, which guides practice in pre-primary and regulated childcare centers, has a foundational shared image of the child based on the beliefs that children have unlimited potential, are eager to interact with and contribute to the world, have fundamental rights to realize and expand their potential, are driven by curiosity and imagination, are capable of and delight in taking responsibility for their own learning, listen and are listened to, and have an enormous need to love and be loved. Children's lives are shaped by their families, communities, and culture. Families bring diverse social, cultural, and linguistic perspectives to the learning environment. As we examine our beliefs about children, we must consider these influences and the potential that they contribute to children's learning. It is our awareness of our responsiveness to the diversity of these perspectives that is at the heart of the image of the child. Dr. Asa Hilliard III, African-American scholar and psychologist, speaks in reference of children of African descent when he says that in our worldview, our children are seen as divine gifts of our Creator. Our children, their families, and the social and physical environment must be nurtured together. Values are deeply held personal convictions or truths. Each is unique and influenced by our own childhood experiences, family background, spiritual and cultural beliefs, experiences as an adult, as an educator, and our own temperament and personality. You may feel more strongly about some values than others, and you may need to examine elements of bias as you explore your values. Values are defining factors in the development of our own image of the child. Identifying your values about children allows you to create a value statement, which provides a lens through which to view your classroom practice. Let's use the following self-reflection exercise to determine your values with regard to children. Looking at the list on the slide, choose five traits you value most in the children you teach. There are no wrong or right answers. Next, for the five traits you selected, think about what each means to you in terms of teaching relationships with children. Then, create a guiding statement which captures these values and describes their meaning for you. Keep this statement close to you as you complete the EDI. It will become a valuable lens through which to view the children you are working with. Taking the time to reflect personally and with your colleagues is an important step. Reflecting on and becoming more aware of our values and beliefs 
helps us to gain a deeper understanding of our practices and equips us to generate responsive practice. Sharing your values and beliefs with colleagues can help to build a deeper understanding of one another and to build and articulate a collective image of the child in your school community.